Man, Jamal Charlo looked pretty decent. He did way better than what I was anticipating. He didn't look as rusty. He didn't even look like he'd been out the ring that long. Only thing was, he was unable to stop Jose Benavidez, which was kind of shocking to me. Considering Benavidez came up multiple weight classes, came from 47, they had to fight at a 163 catch weight. I was expecting Jamal to just knock him out within like eight rounds, but he did good, man. And Jose has a heck of a chin on him. If you're new to the channel, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when more content drops. Let's get right into it. So, Jamal was out of the ring for about two and a half years. As we already know, he had personal issues going on in his life, stuff with him and his wife, mental health issues, depression, all that. Lately, when we've seen him in interviews, he's talking real slow. He has a droopy look in his eyes. His eyes are glazed over. Almost seems like he's not all the way there. I suspect the man is sedated. In a lot of these interviews, maybe he's taking some type of antidepressant or something to help his mood. So that's why he looks overly relaxed. But man, when he came out there, let me tell you, he stayed behind his jab. And I've always said that Jamel was my favorite fighter of the two. But Jamal was always the more technically sound. The reason being, Jamel will abandon his jab sometimes and just he'll get wild. He'll start fighting reckless. He'll start taking a whole lot of unnecessary risk. He'll start chasing you around the ring, lunging in with leaping uppercuts and hooks and just haymakers. Very devastating fighter, but he takes a lot of risk. His brother, Jamal, usually stays behind that jab. He's dropped people with the jab. I believe it was J-Rock. He dropped. We saw him knock down with a jab before. You know what I mean? He has a right hand behind it stays defensively sound never really gets too reckless but man as you know you know as him being like the bigger twin and having a lot of the knockouts accumulated earlier in the career both of them when Jamel didn't have that many from 2017 onwards Jamel just started knocking everybody out man it started with that 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 Lubin knockout in 2017 he just kept it going his brother Jamal kind of went downhill but he looked good last night, and Jose has a heck of a chin on him, man. The man came from 47, then Jose went to 54. Now, you know, last night they they fought at 163. I don't know if Jose's trying to go to 68 or whatever. If he's just going to stay at 160. But, man, he was taking some hard shots. Jose Benavidez was eating some shit from Jamal Charlo. I mean, eating it like... Hard shots all upside his head. And he never went down. Knees never buckled or nothing. It's crazy, man. I can't believe it went all 10 rounds and he didn't get dropped. But, like, as, that just shows how much of a warrior and a gladiator Jose Benavidez is. He's not scared of nobody. He got in there with the bigger twin. He got in there with Danny Garcia. He, he will fight anybody, man. When he got in there with Crawford, he was undefeated. He'd been shot in the leg and everything. He still got in there with Bud, so... Got to take my hat off to Jose, real gladiator. Um, good fight, man. Both of these guys surprised me. Jose surprised me with his chin. And, you know, Jamal, he didn't look like he had that much rust, man. I was expecting a knockout, but I was still expecting him to, like, get the knockout, but still look kind of like he's getting adjusted to being back in the ring and getting a knockout within like eight rounds. But he looked like he didn't miss a lick, man. You know, um, we'll have to see what's next for Jamal Charlo. He's going to 68, so that's interesting. Maybe he can get Caleb Plant sometime in 2024. Like I said before, hit the subscribe button if you have not already, man. I love y'all's knockout rituals. Peace.